All right, boys and girls, here's another program. We are getting ready to pick the name for our hedgehog. The last time we picked three names, and now we're going to pick the final name for our hedgehog. But Mrs. Steckman's going to come join me, and as she does, uh, she's going to actually read off the names of all the ones that were given. All the names that were given. So there's a list of names, and read them nice and loud so that the kids can understand which names were given by other children. Okay, this is Mr. Hedge from Desmond Cool. Oh, that's our grandson out in Wyoming, so he he sent a name in. Freddie from Lily Hudak. Pincushion from Ben Schaff. Slick from Nate Schaff. Tommy from Allison Tillman. Henry from Natalie Nostein. Spike from Gabe Viola. Well, that's close to one of the ones we have in the hat. Spikey is in the hat. So that's real close. Hedgy is from the Pelcheck children. Belle is from Emma Hauk. Scooter is from Addie Viola. Prickleton from Dan Schaff. Hedgy from Charity Hudak. Well, we have Mr. Hedgehog, and we got Hedgy and Hetty and... Rainbow from Madeline Nostein. Prickles from Isaac Schock. Henry from Christina Hudak. Did we have a Henry before? No, that's the only Henry. Hedgy from Andy Cool. Another one from our grandson. And Jack from Alyssa Nostein. All right. Hey, kids, thanks for giving us those names. And now we're going to draw the name for the for the actual name of our friend the hedgehog. Oh, uh -oh. I just spilled one. Put it back in here. I have to shake it up again. All right, Mrs. Steckman, don't look. And the winner is Mr. Hedgehog from Noah Tillman. All right, Noah. This is going to be Mr. Hedgehog. All right, thank you. I hope you had fun with that. I sure did. And we're going to uh, always talk about him as Mr. Hedgehog. And a lot of those other names are great names, but we can only have one. So this is Mr. Hedgehog, and he's going to look official with his hat on. There you go. All right, thank you, Mrs. Steckman, for helping tonight again. And uh, I'm going to give a Bible lesson. And as we give the Bible lesson, we're going to start singing the song. Uh, we, I'd like to begin with the song, um, Only a Boy Named David. And the reason I'm picking that song is it's come, going to be our lesson. It's going to be about David. So kids, join me by singing that chorus, Only a Boy Named David. All right? Only a boy named David, only a little sling. Only a boy named David, but he could pray and sing. Only a boy named David, only a rippling brook. Only a boy named David, but five little stones he took. And one little stone went in the sling, and the sling went round and round. And one little stone went in the sling, and the sling went round and round. And round and round and round and round and round and round and round. And one little stone went up in the air, and the giant came tumbling down. That's right, kids. Our story today is going to be about David and Goliath. But actually, we're going to look right after the time that David killed Goliath, what happened in his life. On the screen, you're going to see some pictures. The first picture that you're going to see, off to the left of the screen, you're seeing a little dry area. It almost looks like it is a, a creek or actually a walking path, but that would be where water would run when there's a rainy season. That would be the kind of area, in fact, this place in Israel is a place they believe that David slew Goliath. And this may have been the very brook, the very area where he came and picked his five smooth stones. The next picture you're going to see is a large grassy area. And that's where we believe the Philistines were waiting. They were standing there all ready to fight the Israelites 
Maybe the Israelites were up on the hill that you saw in the earlier picture. And they said, give us a man that will fight for us. Will fight with us. And nobody volunteered for days and days and days until David said that he would do it. Well, as the Bible tells us, after he slew Goliath, there's an interesting thing that took place in David's life. King Saul wanted David to come be by him. Wanted to have him in his palace, use him as a leader among his military. And when King, David, when, when King Saul called for David to come, David told the account of how he slew Goliath. And someone that was listening became a good friend of David's. I know you kids can't answer out loud to me, but can any of you at home guess the name of the man that became the best friend to David? Now, if you guessed Jonathan, you were right. Jonathan became the best friend of David, and Jonathan was King Saul's son. Jonathan liked David so much that he took his coat and probably his vest, the Bible tells us his belt, his sword, and even his bow for shooting at targets. He took that and gave those items to David. That was a part of the agreement or part of the way he wanted to show David how much he wanted to be his friend and was his friend. Well, you know, David played the harp for King Saul when Saul got very upset. And even when Saul got angry, the harp, playing the beautiful harp, helped calm King Saul and make him be at peace. And on two different times, Saul threw a spear at David. Though the harp calmed him, he was still an angry man. And as David played the harp for Saul, the people began to like David. In fact, when he went to battle and won battles, the people would sing songs that would praise David. So Jonathan liked David. The people started to like David. They would sing songs like, Saul has killed his thousands, but David is ten thousands. And so the people started to really like David, and that bothered Saul. He became very jealous. Another person who began to like David was King Saul's daughter. Michael is her name. In fact, King Saul let Michael marry David. So Jonathan liked David. The people liked David. Michael liked David and married him. So you have many people who like David, and King Saul is getting more and more jealous. Jonathan knew how much his dad did not like David. In fact, King Saul shared it with him. He told him that if he had a chance, he was going to kill David. And so David was fearful for his life. And you can imagine how Jonathan, his best friend, would have felt if he knew that his own dad was wanting to get rid of, to try to remove his son, uh, his best friend, uh, David, from the kingdom. And so Jonathan made this agreement with David. He said, David, we are always going to be best friends. And let's make this agreement that my family, my wife and my children, you will always treat them kindly. And I'll make this agreement with you that I'll always treat your wife and your children kindly. Forever our families are going to be good friends and going to be kind to each other. Now, there came a time where even David's wife, Michael, knew that her father wanted to kill her husband. And one time when King Saul sent guards to the house to see if they could catch David, Michael made believe that David was in bed. And the soldiers rushed into the room and they began to go after that person in the bed. And as they picked it up, it was just a fake pillows, a wig, something that made it look like somebody was laying in that bed. Actually came a time where she helped her husband escape through the window, down the wall, into safety. You know, David realized King Saul is wanting to kill me. David wondered why. In fact, the Bible tells us David asked Jonathan, Jonathan, 
Why does your dad want to kill me? What have I done wrong that would have your dad want to kill me? And John then said, David, I'll find out. In fact, let's do this. We have a feast day coming up. David said, I'm not coming to that feast day because I'm afraid that he'll kill me. Well, if you will ask your father for permission for me not to come to that feast, we'll know whether he's upset. We'll know whether he's angry with me. And so the plan worked out that David did not go to those feast days. And Jonathan told his dad, David is asked not to be here because he's going to go worship the Lord with his family, and so he's not going to be here. And Saul got so angry, he got angry with his own son. He said, I knew you were protecting him. I know you're trying to keep him from danger. Well, there was an agreement that Jonathan and David had made that if Saul would become angry, David needed to know that. And Jonathan said, I'll give you a message in a very special way, and you'll know to flee and not come back because it's not safe for you to be around. And that's what I'm going to illustrate here on our board. In fact, I got some new colored markers so we can do this a little better this time, hopefully. So the plan was that Jonathan... David would go hide in a field, and so we'll first of all draw our field here where David is hiding. There's some grass in this field, and there was a big stone, and the stone's name was Ezel, E-Z-E-L. And at that large stone that was in the field, David had been told by Jonathan that he should go hide by that stone. And so we'll make David stand here. So David standing behind the stone and hiding, and what Jonathan said he was going to do, that he was going to come here into this field, and let's make Dave, Jonathan with, with in the color purple, because, you know, he is the king's son. And so Jonathan comes after he sees how angry his dad was going to be, and he... comes into the field, and he had made this plan with David that he would have a bow and he would shoot three arrows. We'll put an arrow here. We'll make the arrow red. He would shoot three arrows over to the stone. So let's do that. The first arrow he sh shoots, we'll just make some dotted lines and it lands here. And he shoots another, shoots another arrow and it lands here. And he shoots his last arrow and it lands here. And his agreement was that he would have with him a, a, a young boy. And he would shoot those arrows and then he would tell the young boy, go get my arrows. And as the boy would run to get the arrows, Jonathan said, I will say to the boy, didn't the arrows go past you? Hurry up. Don't keep standing there. Go get those arrows. Go run and get those arrows. And that would be the sign for David. He would know it was not safe. If he would say to the boy, the arrows didn't go that far, come back, it meant to David, come back. But if he said the arrows went past you, Go get them. He was sending David away. So as the Bible tells us, that's exactly what happened. Jonathan came with the young boy. He shot his arrows. And his words to David were, 
that he had shot the arrows and they went way past where the boy was looking. Go away. Now, when the boy came back with the arrows that he found, Jonathan sent the boy back into town, back to the palace, and then he and David met. And they cried, and they hugged, and they said, Oh, promise, we need to promise one another we'll always treat each other's family well. And they told each other how much they cared for one another, and David left, because Saul was after his life. Saul was angry with David, and he hated David. Now, loyalty is an important part of friendship. Always being committed to our friends. And one thing that Jonathan and David showed in their life was that they were loyal to one another. You know, young people, children, that's important that we would be loyal to our friends. The Bible says a friend loveth at all times. If you have a friend, always love them. Always care for them. Always be kind to them. Don't say bad things about them behind their back. Don't say things to, your, to, to somebody else about your friend when your friend's not around, and then when they come around, then you, then you act nice to them. No, the right kind of friendship, Bible friendship, is to be loyal all the time. A friend loveth at all time. In fact, Solomon also said, Thine own friend and thy father's friend forsake not. Don't turn your back on your friend. And this story illustrates that very well because Jonathan stayed faithful to his friend David even when his own dad wanted him, didn't want him to. His dad didn't want Jonathan to be friends with this good man David. And yet Jonathan chose to be faithful, to be loyal to his friend because he knew his friend was doing right. He knew God had appointed his friend to be the next king, and he wanted to be faithful to him. So as we think of David's life, yeah, he slew the giant, but right after that, this happened, that he had to move away from the king because the king hated him so much, and yet the king's very son, Jonathan, was a loyal friend to him. Hey kids, you be loyal friends to the kids in our church, to the other people that you know through homeschooling or at your school where you attend, you be a loyal friend to them. That's what God would have us to do. So for our lesson today, it's that friendship is loyalty. A good friend is a loyal friend. He's always a friend. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed it. And remember, this little character's name, Mr. Hedgehog. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.